So next up, we have Medical Sonosphere. If you'd like to come and join us, please give a round of applause to Dr. Chen Spita from Sheba Medical Center and Ilan Landersberg, Landersman, the CEO of Medical Sonosphere. Come on, give him another clap. Yeah, all right. <laughs> We are Sonosphere, we are a young company accelerated by uh, Galil Ofek in Katsrin. And we are also seated in uh, Shiba Medical Center. My name is Hen, I'm a vascular surgeon in Shiba Medical Center. So our goal is to bring the world a new imaging device that has a precision, an anatomical precision, precision like CT, but with a physiological information of an ultrasound and without radiation contrast. And the way we do it is allowing the computer getting all the ultrasound imaging with uh, uh, coordinates in space. So each image gets its own coordinates. So when you look at the city, you see a beautiful anatomical view, but you don't know the velocity of the blood inside the artery. And it costs you a lot of radiation and a lot of contrast material that can ruin the kidneys. However, ultrasound uh, uh, is a beautiful uh, physiological image. I can see the velocities, but I, uh, it's a poor anatomical image. Uh, but no radiation, no contrast material. For me as a surgeon, when I look at the velocity, I know whether or not this patient needs an operation. This is a carotid that needs an operation because it's a high velocity of the blood in the carotid. So the question is, how to get the best of both worlds? And the answer is with the, uh, with the tomography. If the computer will know each ultrasound image is coordinate in space, then it can fuse, the computer can fuse all the images into one holistic image. Uh, so the way we do it, we are putting inside uh, the ultrasound gel small spheres, and we are mounting on, on the transducer a camera. So we are completely add-on. We are not producing uh, in, uh, ultrasound. We are adding on a, a camera on top of the transducer. The spheres are static inside the gel on top of the patient, and the transducer is going through the skin. So the camera sees the, uh, the, the, the spheres getting closer to it. So now the computer can reconstruct the path the, the transducer, transducer has, done, has gone through the patient, and after the reconstruction, it can have coordinates in space for each ultrasound image. But that's not enough. Because we have a camera, and we have a lot of optic images, so we can fuse all the optic images on the same coordinates, and have a 3D surface area image of the patient with the ultrasonic artery fused together. So for me, it's very important because I, I can now know where to cut the patient in order to organize, to reorganize the artery. And also we can have registration of other modalities on top of our image. So this is the idea. Our first experiment was, this is Doron's neck, long and beautiful neck. And I'm scanning him. You can see the camera on top of the transducer. And you can see this is the, the ordinary ultrasound. And when you're getting close, you can see the small spheres inside the gel. The camera can see the, 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 these spheres. Now the computer sees both images and synchronize them. The optic images of the spheres and the neck on the one's neck and also the ultrasonic image. Now after it, the computer reconstruct the path, each image has its own coordinates and now the computer can fuse all the optic images, all the ultrasonic images, and together to fuse them. Uh, to get, I, I try to trick the computer doing a longitudinal, longitudinal view, but the computer got it right. And this is the, the, the solution. You see the 3D image of the one's neck, inside of which you can see the ultrasound image. A lot of axial slices of the artery inside the one's neck. And it's in the right orientation, the right depth, the right velocity. You see all this, the axial views. The next, uh, the next experiment was the one's leg. Still handsome boy. 
Uh, so what we wanted to see here is a superficial femoral artery in the leg, which always get clotted when someone is diabetic and smoking. So this is a very important artery. We wanted to show it inside the Ron's leg. So we are scanning uh, the Ron's leg and uh, the computer getting all the optic images and all the ultrasonic images synchronized and we can have the superficial femoral artery in the thigh of the Ron and the posterior tibial artery in the uh, calf. Nowadays, we are producing a, a new device of a, a, a smartphone sitting on a manual a handed ultrasound Bluetooth uh, device. So we, we, we are now the camera, it's a, the, the smartphone sitting on the transducer. And then the next experiment was scanning with this smartphone Avi's neck. Avi's neck, yeah. So now we are scanning with a small transducer, Bluetooth, Bluetooth uh, uh, transducer that's sending all the images to the smartphone. The smartphone also sees the neck and the spheres, synchronize both of them, and sending the information to the cloud. In the cloud, we can process the images much faster to real-time uh, imaging, to getting to process the image in real time, almost real time, and also secure the information. So this is the this is what the the, the scanner sees. This is what the computer sees, also, and this is the result. The 3D outer surface optic image of Avi, and inside of which we have the ultrasonic image of the artery. And we can put the carotid in the right place, in the right orientation. And actually this image, this, the, the way we do it now, it's actually our generation one of the device. In generation one, we want to give the uh, physician, the operator, we want to give him a, 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 um, a, a, a landscape of the artery with focusing on a few places in the artery that are, uh, uh, are maybe has important information about the velocity. Here we decided upon the internal carotid and the common carotid with uh, very important velocities that for me as a surgeon will aid me deciding whether or not to operate the run, Avi, sorry, to operate Avi, and to follow up after the operation. Our go-to strategy, our disease that we are, we are going to tackle is a chronic threatening limb ischemia. The patients come to the ER with gangrene, and usually what we are doing, we are doing a Doppler uh, ultrasound, which, which doesn't give any anatomical view. Then we have to hospitalize him because he usually has kidney impairment, and we're gonna give him contrast material, so we want to uh, give him some IV fluids, and then we're going to do a CT for the anatomical view. Then we're gonna wait a week or two because we want the, the kidneys to uh, get better after the contrast material before they get another contrast material in the angioplasty. And then we're gonna wait a, a month or so to see whether we, we manage to save the leg. What we, are what, what we are planning to do is enter in this point and say, look, we can have the physiological image and the anatomical image in the same time without contrast material, without radiation, and give the physician in generation one, give this physician the information whether or not to do an angioplasty and what is the strategy in order to heal the leg. And our goal, my dream, is also to be able to do the angioplasty with this device. So also in the angioplasty, we will not need contrast material or radiation. And then have the physiological information during real time. Are, are we good enough? Is it, uh, the stent is working? Is the leg is going to be saved? Uh, maybe, Ilan, you will talk now about the market. Regarding the global market, so uh, we are speaking here about uh, almost $10 billion market that expects it to reach in 2029. Uh, the largest segment to grow in the, is the vascular uh, ultrasound uh, and the largest uh, uh, regional in the in the world is uh, North America especially United States um, regarding the generation so uh, Hen just mentioned that 
We have Gen 1. Gen 1 basically uh, deal with the documentation of the, of the patient. And in addition, uh, it gives the ability to uh, plan the treatment for the surgeon. Uh, Gen, Gen 2 will be follow, and Gen 3, as uh, Ken uh, mentioned as well, brings also the ability to have uh, non, on, in addition to the functional information, also anatomical information that will be able to give the proper treatment. Uh, well, this is the group. Um, um, so beside me, we have uh, Dr. Ken Giladi, have a uh, large um, expertise in uh, image processing and uh, robotics and algorithm. You also, uh, you already met uh, Ken. We have Avi, he's our project manager. And Doron Mansour, he's uh, leading our clinical studies. Uh, so in summary, we are located at Chiba Hospital. Uh, we are uh, planning to start a clinical trial uh, in the Vascular Institute quite soon. Uh, in summary, the device is simple, safe, cost-effective, can scan the entire organ and brings uh, an offer anatomical and uh, physiological uh, data. And uh, just to mention, we are part of uh, Galil uh, Go Innovation uh, Incubator, located uh, Chiba Hospital, uh, part of the ARC uh, company, located in the ARC Center. That's it. Amazing stuff, really amazing stuff. So, I, uh, I just have one quick follow-up question for you. I know we're conscious of time uh, as the break's coming up shortly. So really an amazing solution and, and uh, congrats on such amazing innovation. I love to see where um, the implementation of new technology without uh, asking to teach them something new, a new procedure. You've literally backed on to the, the current ultra scan uh, uh, very simply. You don't have to change the procedure. You don't have to change the hospital appointment schedule. You're grabbing more data. You're giving more solutions back. Really, really wonderful. So um, thanks so much for that. So uh, very, very quickly, um, the hardware side of things, I, I saw that it's more likely to be mainly a camera, but you'll tell me about that. Uh, the solution that you're adding on to the ultrasound, was it difficult to develop the hardware part of it, where did you get that done um, for that side of things? And the second question would be, what are you looking for on the next stage business-wise? Well, the few, the first few experiments were with the camera that cost $10 from Amazon and the spheres I stole from my daughter, the nuts that seem in the slime. So this is hardware. You always have a balance between hardware and software. So when you have a very cheap hardware and simple hardware, you have a very complex software. This is why we have Gila D, which is a genius physics that does all this software. Makes a lot of sense. I just tell you, Ken, next time you're on the stage and your scrubs, don't talk about cutting patients. Yeah, it was a bit scary, so <laughs> tell that one. So. <laughs> Sorry, just lastly, what are you looking for business-wise? You're looking for partners, investors, uh, um, new hospitals to work with? What are you looking for? Yeah, we are looking for uh, strategic partners uh, that can we that can uh, join our uh, journey here. Uh, always looking for uh, uh, strong partners that uh, have a knowledge in the diagnostic field, in the medical device field, which is uh, quite uh, unique. So. Uh, yeah, we're happy to talk. Amazing, guys. So thank you so much. Give it up for Ren and Ilan. Thank you, guys. Wonderful solution.